Dante Martin and Matt Seidel versus Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson. <laughs> so the story here, for as much as they're pushing the Dark Order not getting along, we'll get to them later, Nightmare Family is having some troubles. Cody doesn't, Arn doesn't like Cody. Lee Johnson doesn't seem like Cody. The fans really don't like Cody. None of them like each other. Arn's trying to have a huddle, but Cody's taking his, calling his own shot, I guess, and, and demanding to start the match. Arn's pissed at him. And CM Puck notes, notes the fans seem a little bit conflicted as the crowd is passionately chanting, Cody sucks, Cody sucks. They're definitely going to go heel with Cody, which a while ago I thought was just madness. But they'll they'll pull it off just fine. They I will. Mean, you can you can tell from the commentary that they're they're planting the seeds. You can tell that Cody is he's planting the seeds, and it's going to happen. And it doesn't have to be the cliched, and we always do this. It doesn't have to be the cliched. It's all the fault of each and every one of you. He people better not line. blame the fans. Actually, he may as well if he's going to turn heel because that shit's heat him. in AEW. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they'll find a reason for him to suddenly not get along with everybody. It'll it'll be it'll, it'll be fine. And frankly, for a guy who can't challenge for the world title, he's done everything as a babyface he could do anyway. So unless he's gonna, unless uh, Cody and Lee Johnson are gonna chase the tag titles, I don't know what else he do at this point. So they had a fun match. Uh, Dante Martin at one point did a closed feet leapfrog, which if you know what a leapfrog is, you realize that sounds just about impossible. But he's Dante Martin, so he did it. And then before I go uh, too far in praising him, I will note shortly after that, he jumped of his own volition and fell right onto his own head. So that was not perfect. Yeah, he tried to do like a, uh, I think he was trying to do a, a front, front head spring. spring. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he forgot the spring. He just <laughs> did a front head. <laughs> Which I I can do yeah. that part. I've done that, yes. Yeah, it didn't, didn't look too I, well. I believe that's why I chipped this tooth right here. Um, so <laughs> it's funny. They do some stuff. And they go to break, and nothing ever happens during the break except for his watching. And during the break, they do this parade of dives capped off by Dante Martin doing this running springboard. He's flying through the stars and comes down into both guys. It's the most beautiful thing. Why did that happen during the break? I don't really know. So, Cody's in there with Dante Martin. He kicks Matt Seidel off the apron. Matt Seidel's standing there, obeying the rules, doing his job. Cody takes it upon himself to take a cheap shot at him. He drops Dante with a vertebraker. That leads to a four-way. But then when Cody goes to tag out, Lee is not there. Because they're still not getting along. But then, when Cody's hung up in the corner, or the ropes, Lee drags him into the corner, tags himself in, and he grabs Dante, hits a leg grapevine brain buster onto the knee thing, and pins him. I thought this match was also awesome. Yeah, it was a very good match, and the most talked about thing obviously happened afterwards, where they do the interview with, with Shivani, and Arn Anderson tells the story about how Malachi Black, you challenged him, he beat your ass. You challenged him again, he beat you a second time, he beat up Brock. Last time you wrestled him, you were all concerned about me. Who gives a shit about me? And he says, let me tell you there's between you and me. He brings up a carjacking me. He did. He says, if some guy tries to carjack your car... You're going to give him the car, and you're just going to say, I don't want any trouble. But if someone tries to carjack my car, I'm going to pull that Glock out, and I'm going to blow their brains out. I'm not going to associate with a loser. Come with me, Lee. That's pretty much how it went down, yes. So there's been uh, there's been controversy the last couple of days, because I didn't defend this, okay? Mm-hmm. But I was pointing out that on Raw, uh, we had an interview with Goldberg, where he threatened to kill Bobby Lashley. Right. And people were like, oh, this one was much worse. And I was like, well, first off, they're both bad. You shouldn't be threatening to kill people. But I am going to explain, because people just don't seem to get it, why I think that Goldberg, what he said was worse than what Arn said, okay? Are you ready for this? Sure, why not? All right, let's think about our real lives, Vinny. Mm-hmm. It's the Brian and Vinny and Craig show, okay? Let's say that years ago you said, do you know, Brian, that I was once carjacked? Mm -hmm. Which happened to you, Vinny. I was carjacked, yes. Yeah, that's why this is such an important story. Right. Some man carjacked you. He yanked your ass out of the car. He stole your car. He drove off and crashed the car. Mm -hmm. And then, because you owed money on the car, you were billed 
for the carjacking. Correct. Okay. Yeah. This would only happen to you. Thank you. All right. So if you told me that story, Vinny, and I said, bro, that guy ripped the car door open and he said, get out of the fucking car, and you just got out of the car. You know what I would have done if that guy would have ripped that car door open? I would have reached in the glove compartment. I'd have pulled out a fucking Glock. I would have blown that guy's brains out. That's what I would have done, Vinny. Okay. Okay, that's not a very nice thing to say. Well. Okay, but here's okay. the thing. Mm -hmm. Let's say that I post something on Twitter and Craig makes a smart-ass comment. And I say to you, Vinny, when that motherfucker comes over tonight, I'm going to beat the shit out of him. And if I'm lucky... I might kill him. That is much worse. That is a specific terroristic threat to a specific individual. Do you understand? Yes. You telling a carjacking story and me going, ah, I'd blow that fucking guy's brains out. I'm just being a cocky dick. No. But I'm not specifically threatening any person. It wasn't Alistair Black that was the carjacker in the story. Arn's point was, you are a, uh, a pacifist, and I am a fucking Arn, I'm an Anderson. And that's why I'm an Anderson, and that's why you're a loser here. That was the point of the promo. Now, again, I'm not advocating for what Arn said, but specifically threatening to kill a specific individual, that's bad, that's worse. Right? I, I, I suppose. Thank I you. Don't much care, but... <laughs> I care because I've been hearing about it all day. But I will say one more thing. Mm -hmm. Here's the real reason that I didn't like Arn's line. Okay. Because Arn had the easiest possible line, and it should have been... If that guy tried to carjack you, Cody, you'd have given him the car. But if that guy tried to carjack me, I'd pull out a fucking tire iron and I'd take his knee out. Because that at least happened in fucking pro wrestling canon! Right? These fucking uh, horsemen. I believe they did that, yes. Yeah, yeah, so that's what he should have said. Then yes. you don't have to worry about everyone getting concerned because you threatened to blow guys' brains out. Anyway. Well, I would say, as the uh, resident uh, figure for online expert on being a carjacking victim, uh, what happened to me was almost exactly, almost word for word, what Arn said about happening to Cody. Some guy opened my car door, began to punch me. And when I got out to defend myself, he threatened to have a gun. I was driving a Toyota Tercel with, I believe, 200,000 miles on it. It was not a car worth killing or dying for. I said, take the damn car. And, uh, yes, he wrapped around a telephone pole like two miles later. And, uh. Uh, and that, that honestly, was uh, not so bad. It was what happened the next day and trying to get the car replaced afterwards the month that followed. It was much, much, much worse. So, yeah, don't get carjacked. Thumbs down. Would not recommend. Uh, but I will say, uh, on your comment about how what Arn said was kind of a dick thing, I had so many people tell me, I thought that me out of shot that fucker or whatever they said. Oh, <laughs> how about that? Many, many people oh, actually said this. Oh, look at out, look at look at that. And I'm yeah. the bad guy here yeah. for saying it's worse that you're gonna fucking kill a guy because yeah. he put your kid in a in a full Nelson. You know how many kids I put in a full Nelson? Not enough. I never put kids in a full Nelson. Yeah. Anyway, it was a hell of a promo. <laughs> It was, it was yeah, not aren't great. It was uh, maybe a little, let's say, edgy. But it was definitely edgy. He didn't threaten to end someone's life, uh, but in self-defense. So he didn't threaten to end someone's. I mean, he did, but I mean, it was more just talking a bunch of shit. Yeah, he was threatening to end someone's life if they attacked him first. Yeah, Goldberg just threatened to kill the guy. Yes. Roman Reigns versus Edge for the title. Sorry, Brian. What the hell's going on over there? <laughs> Got a text. My bad. It plays a song for a text? Brian, move along. Who here in the chat can name that tune? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's This person says it sounds like Faith. With that one guy? <laughs> we got to have Faith. guy. Yeah, whatever his name was. His name is George Michael. George Michael, that's right. Yes. I was going to say Shawn Michaels. No. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.